गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम टू ट्रांस इंडिया लेजेंड्स ऑफ रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट स्पॉन्सर्ड बाय अशोक लेलैंड एंड पावर्ड बाय गल्फ ऑयल लुब्रिकेंस फ्रेंड्स कैलकाटा हैज बीन अ हब फॉर मेनी ट्रांसपोर्टर्स वंस अपॉन अ टाइम ऑल दो मेनी ऑफ दीज कंपनीज हैव मूव्ड टू अदर मेट्रोज देर आर स्टिल अ साइजेबल नंबर ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट कंपनीज इन कैलकाटा एंड दैट इज वन ऑफ द रीजन्स वाई द ट्रांसपोर्टर्स इन कैलकाटा कुड पुट टूगेदर a lot of funds to buy a huge chunk of land to set up a transport nagar under the aegis of calcutta goods transport association friends our legend for this month is one such transport company or rather a logistics company from calcutta surprisingly this legend had no background in the transport business in the sense that none of his family members were in the transport business and his father and grandfather were actually against him getting into the road transport industry However at a very young age itself this person realized the potential the road transport industry had in the years to come and that is the reason he took this plunge and today his company is not only into road transport but also many other verticals related to road transport friends trans india is proud to present in the legend of road transport series sponsored by ashok leland and powered by gulf oil lubricants our legend of the month Mr Pramod Gupta from EFC Logistics Mr Pramod Gupta is a first generation transporter who started off small working in other transport companies eventually he set up his own company and today the company EFC Logistics is amongst the better known transport companies out of East India we shot this interview in Mr Pramod Gupta's office which is nestled in one of the most premium buildings in the Salt Lake area of Calcutta and his office no way looked like what a transport company's office was until some time back and it was no less than what a multinational company's office would look like today friends we are also very happy that the certification of legends of road transport was handed over to mr pramod gupta by his son ankit and his grandson savya in fact mr gupta shares a very close bond with his grandson savya and every time he spoke about him we could see the glitter in his eyes friends as you mentioned earlier mr pramod gupta started off as a regular transporter but realized the potential and the need to diversify and therefore he got into warehousing clearing and forwarding and also manufacturing coming up after this very short break our very interesting and exciting interview with mr pramod gupta in the legends of road transport series sponsored by ashok leland and powered by gulf oil lubricants see you on the other side of this very short break आज इस बस में एक एस्ट्रोनॉट जा रहा है उनके पास एक रॉकस्टार भी बैठी है इनके बीच एक लॉयर भी है एक इंजीनियर भी है एक डिजाइनर भी जा रही है क्योंकि इस बस में सिर्फ बच्चे नहीं इस देश का भविष्य जा रहा है और हमारा काम है उन्हें सुरक्षित उनकी मंजिल तक पहुंचाना अशोक लीलंड कोई मंजिल दूर नहीं अरे छोटे यार रोज सुबह हम दूध लेते हैं कभी सेम भैंस का दूध दो बार खरीदा होगा क्या सोचने वाली बात है ना अपने अशोक लेलन में कौन सा ऑयल इसमें सोचने वाली कोई बात ही नहीं है गल्फ ड्यूरामैक्स खास अशोक लेलन ट्रक्स के लिए बना है पैक पर देखो साफ लिखा है सिर्फ अशोक लेलन के लिए नहीं बल्कि अशोक लेलन द्वारा सुझाया गया खुद अशोक लेलन कह रहा है और इसको डालते हो तो ये चले भी पूरे अस्सी हजार किलोमीटर वेलकम बैक फ्रेंड्स टू लेजेंड्स ऑफ रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट स्पॉन्सर्ड बाय अशोक लेलैंड एंड पावर्ड बाय गल्फ ऑयल लुब्रिकेंस वी आर इन कन्वर्सेशन टूडे विद मिस्टर प्रमोद गुप्ता फ्रॉम ई एफ सी लॉजिस्टिक्स प्रमोद जी कैन यू टेल अबाउट ई एफ सी लॉजिस्टिक्स एंड इट्स जर्नी ई एफ सी स्टार्टेड इट्स जर्नी इन दर नाइनटीन एटी थ्री मैन आई वॉज अंग बॉय ऑफ नाइनटीन ईयर्स ओल्ड 
फर्स्ट जून 1983 वी स्टार्टेड दिस एज अ ईस्टर्न रोडवेज कॉर्पोरेशन इट वाज अ पार्टनरशिप फॉर्म विद मी एंड माय ब्रदर संजय बोथ एज अ पार्टनर eventually we started this company and we were going slowly slowly and after that we thought to move in a faster way we need to have a private limited company then this eastern roadways corporation name we did not get the corporation word so we changed to eastern freight carriers private limited after a few years we started a, another company by the name of efc logistics india private limited and after a few years we merge both the companies with permission from calcutta high court and now it's efc logistics india private limited having different verticals transport fleet owning warehousing cfs are a different vertical but the name efc stand that is how we started this so pramod ji what are the various operations under efc we started owning vehicle or making the fleet in the year 2003 so now presently if you talk of different verticals so we treat fleet as a different vertical transport booking as another vertical warehousing purely rental as another vertical and it's a last mile delivery which we do it for uh, dhl in uh, the city of calcutta where we do the courier delivery even that is a different vertical so all these different vertical put together and now we have got a bit big vertical in the mumbai it's cfs division so all these vertical work independently but uh, again at the end of the year they are merged together and in the brand efc as a whole well uh, which is the profit center in amongst all the verticals though my experience says that road transport would rank somewhere right at the bottom Uh, no 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 transport is again a very hard core business in a way that the volumes are more but the percentage margins are very very low association level also we are pressuring government we are requesting government to do away with this 2% tds because the margins are not uh, that the uh, somebody call it say gp of 10% where we can have a margin of even if you talk of a gp of 5 6% hardly you are left with 2% np if you are uh, cost controls are very high so naturally if you call of a percentage margin it's very low in transport business and it is highest in the warehousing business because it is a capital centric business in warehouse once you build a warehouse then whatever volume or uh, turnover you have it's all your uh, basically the margin minus interest or the repairing cost so the main margin if you talk in the percentage it's uh, warehousing list percentage is in transport and uh, cfs it is average margin so all put together we are having a good so i can only say that till but the main volume comes from the transport business pramod ji we have observed over the years that transport companies who have diversified into uh, warehousing or cnf and other verticals are doing better than just pure transport companies was it a driving force for you to venture into these options it is if you are only confined to do the transport business it's really a very very hard times because the margins are so low and with the inductment of all this uh, big companies coming from outside and they they have got a deep pockets to burn they are not even looking of a margin word they are purely into the scalability of their volume so they are into the valuation game and we are into the transportation game so it's there is no match but as long as they are there as long as the investors are there so profit margins are low very very low and at times there are no margin and its story is going to remain like this so as long as if you are if you want to remain in this business you have to have a support of some ancillary business like warehousing or uh, cnf or a different sort of third third mile delivery you can say because in the core transport with prime delivery there is hardly any margin anywhere in the in the india babu ji how did the idea of getting into transportation uh, occur to you 
more importantly because none of your family members your father or your grandfather have been anywhere close to this business actually they were not only the part of the industry they were damn against this industry so in their opinion at that time when i started this i started my career in the year 1979 when i was a boy of 15 year old so i started under the leadership of my uncle mr b r gupta and uh, premier road carriers limited so for four years i was under him under his guidance and uh, he made me a person which i am today but my father and grandfather they were against this but somehow i was not inclined to start their family business so i made a try and uh, god was with me it was a successful journey so far and i hope to continue now my second generation is also in this and uh, the business of transport was different at that time although the profit margins were more but uh, we were not regarded as a better citizen at that time but now the position and the story is changing uh, now people are understanding in other industry also the transporter are also a uh, good people learned people educated people at that time only the uneducated people used to come to this industry so by far in this last 3 4 decade that notion has changed but now even uh, but only the problem margins problem is basically with all the industry but it is more with this industry because it is open to everybody there is no restriction as such other from the government side or from the association side or any licensing side so it's open to all whoever wants they can come and join this so that's a reason more and more people uh, even if they don't want they're joining this but uh, uh, after some time they feel they are not successful they just come out of the industry because uh, after investing so many money or so and if you don't have a good experience so you are bound to incur heavy losses but at that time i was under ye ta to do something of my own and that is the factor which forced me to come and uh, uh, see what i can do for this so i joined this industry pramoji how has the company's growth chart been since you started and to what it is today when i started in 1983 first year my turnover was 20 lakhs second year it was 40 and uh, from there onward it's a story now we are uh, hoping to touch 400 crores with this parent company efc logistics after this uh, gst regime now we have got a two company one is efc logistics another is efc infrastructure where we are working for the client who want a services of rcm only there also we have got a turnover of around around 50 crores or so so we have already cross 400 crores i am not in a hurry to just jump to a big big numbers it's a slow and steady growth and a journey and i am happy with that thank god i have got a good team of staff with me who are working day and night together to make it a success story so prabhu ji what is your fleet size currently and what is the product mix like fleet we are having around 600 plus we are having different model of fleet across which are available across this industry starting from three wheeler to 22 wheelers and now practically since last one year or so we are increasing the fleet of trailers with a newer model 55 tonner and that's a good model which has been launched by industry after a long period so current strength is around 600 plus Pramoji like many other transport companies have you also increased your fleet post GST keeping in mind the input credit available that would be a wrong perception if somebody increases their fleet just because they are getting a GST margin you have any 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 vertical which you grow or anybody grows that it has to be able to stand on its own feet otherwise uh, it won't succeed gst that only increases your cash flow otherwise you are already getting a depreciation the amount of uh, gst you claim you will not be able to claim depreciation on that 
so only a cash flow is uh, better when you are taking a benefit of gst input under fcm otherwise uh, practically there is no big difference so you don't uh, uh, personally if you ask me i'll advise everybody to not to go to increase the fleet only because you are getting a input tax credit but do you think that the dual taxation system of fcm as well as rcm for the same industry is causing chaos and at the same time not uh, giving a level playing field do you think there should be just one system no i personally feel there are still uh, total manufacturing industry or other industry they have not been under gst like this liquor industry power industry so unless until and uh, now even offer petrol they are not under uh, this fuel is not under gst so unless until all parrot industry comes under one roof of fcm it's not possible so you you have to have rcm and fcm both but uh, now government has in last budget or so they have given some relaxation ki one company can have a rcm and fcm both so you have to take best out of this based on your uh, client list you have to choose what you want to be fcm rcm both can continue together there is no 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 big issue as far as if you ask me personally friends many companies build a usp for themselves something that sets them apart from other companies however this is not something that is built overnight this is a process this is a journey so what is the usp of efc logistics we'll talk about this and more with our legend for the month mr pramod gupta you are watching legends of road transport sponsored by ashok leland and powered by gulf oil lubricants we'll see you on the other side of this very short break आज इस ट्रक पे एक किसान की जमा पूंजी जा रही है एक दुकानदार की तरक्की भी है एक मां की ममता भी है आज इस ट्रक में सिर्फ गेहूं चावल नहीं एक बेटी की ताकत भी सफर कर रही है और उनके संग एक ड्राइवर की मेहनत भी है क्योंकि इस ट्रक में सिर्फ अनाज नहीं इस देश के कई लोगों के अरमान और सपने भी चलते हैं और हमारा काम है उन्हें सुरक्षित उनकी मंजिल तक पहुंचाना अशोक लीलंड कोई मंजिल दूर नहीं अरे छोटे एक इंसान अपने जीवन में लगभग 12 लाख किलोमीटर चलता है उस हिसाब से तो हम ट्रक से भी ज्यादा चल रहे सोचने वाली बात है अपने अशोक लेलैंड में कौन सा ऑयल इसमें सोचने वाली कोई बात ही नहीं है गल्फ ड्यूरामैक्स खास अशोक लेलैंड ट्रक्स के लिए बना है बैक पर देखो साफ लिखा है सिर्फ अशोक लेलैंड के लिए नहीं बल्कि अशोक लेलैंड द्वारा सुझाया गया खुद अशोक लेलैंड कह रहा है और इसको डालते हो तो ये चले भी पूरे अस्सी किलोमीटर Welcome back to Legends of Road Transport sponsored by Ashok Leyland and powered by Gulf Oil Lubricants. We are in conversation today with Mr. Pramod Gupta from EFC Logistics. So Pramod ji, what is the USP of EFC? What sets it apart from other transport companies? One of my client had asked me, Pramod ji, you ask only good about you. What is the negative point? So jokingly I have told him once that if you take my services i'll make you addicted of my services you will not be able to go anywhere else be loyal to yourself aur aaj ka kaam kal pe nahi chhodna make it a point whatever is in your hand and if you have got ability to close it today try to do it today you have to control your cost it has to be best as far as the industry is concerned otherwise the competition is so high if your cost is not competitive you are bound to have incur losses and ultimately the business will suffer pramod ji there has always been a debate or a divide in the industry between having an asset heavy model or an asset light model where you depend largely on market trucks what is your thought on this and what is the efc model like it is it has to be combination of both 
it's not that we are doing all our business through our own fleet but uh, i always tell without owning a fleet means i am going to a battle without ammunition so i have to borrow a ammunition from other to fight a battle no everybody knows owning a fleet is a losing affair today it's not making any you are not making any margin by owning a fleet but even then if you are going to a client i mean uh, gradually the things are moving in a direction where fleet owning and transport business is becoming one part so that thing of uh, owning a fleet by different single owners because of competition level single owners are moving out of this because there is no margin so i feel you need to have a good amount of fleet with yourself if not 100% at least uh, some percentage of your business should be covered through your own fleet where you can guarantee service level to your client otherwise if you are totally dependent on market fleet at times you are in a miserable position pramod ji the government has announced a scrapping policy and is in the process there are a lot of changes happening how do you see this impacting the smaller transporters and the truckers unless until government comes out with a strong support to small players in scrapping policy like a big discount because already we feel the coating price of a vehicle is different than finally landing price so they can very well say that our uh, mrp is 40 lakhs we are giving a discount of say 20% so that is not going to help a small owner so the government they have to come out with a strong support to a uh, small players that they will get uh, so much discount in owning a new vehicle along with a big uh, i mean the if the government only pays you for the scrap material value then you are not in a benefit government has to come out ki is saal ka model ka is gaadi ka hum itna aapko denge if that support is there then again some big discount in form of depreciation can be there so unless until some support direct and some indirect supports are there it is not going to be any beneficial to either small or big players but overall do you think that the government is supportive of the road transport industry government want to be supportive but i don't think the government has got that much uh, feeling what a normal transporter or a fleet owner is having a problem for that we need to have a regular interaction with the government but unfortunately our uh, parent associations are not in that uh, comfort level with the government when we can clearly express our problems like we we talk of gst we talk of income tax like very small things we have been maintaining uh, mentioning it from uh, our sss level also what is the requirement of a pan number to be separately from a uh, owner side it can only be imprinted in the rc when you are doing a temporary registration you are already taking all the details so what is the harm in printing that then again why you are collecting uh, tds on a higher rate and then again refunding it it's a big trouble to both of us our uh, working capital get blocked so there are certain things if the government thinks it's not a loss of revenue to government even we are talking of only the revenue neutralizing things where the loss is nil and the ease of doing business is more for the transport so i think government in papers want to be very supportive but for that support they need to have a practical and more and more meaningful discussions with industry so that they understand our problem and come out with a solution where there is a win win situation for all of us pramod ji what are the typical problems that the industry is facing today here is i mean in last uh, all india motor transport congress meeting in mumbai the same question was asked to me about the national logistic policy also there are told in the two things which we need immediately to do one is a corruption level it has to be zero corruption and where we are facing the highest level of corruption and the second thing is inefficiency in running a vehicle i mean detention is such a thing which nobody is even serious enough so if we see that the normally the in best case scenario the vehicles run for 20 days a month and 10 days is a idle time but if you talk of the practical situation there are many cases where the vehicle doesn't run even 12 days for 18 days it is lying idle somewhere other at the consignee premises or consignor or at the check post so if we have to 
take care of that very strongly so that we come up with a level where the our prime minister expecting our national logistic cost to be there in a single digit unless until because all other cost i mean that's nothing in our hand na diesel is controlled by government toll tax again by government tire cost is controlled by the tire companies so basically our cost centers out of our 100 rupee cost 80 rupees cost is directly controlled by government or the agencies so where the cost cannot come down unless you do some dramatic things which are impacting our other things in my opinion these two things are are needed to be immediately done first is a removal of corruption it's mainly because of rtu label check posts and second the consignee should or consigner should be mail liable by the government if they are making some unnecessary detention of the vehicle your company and how important is it in the growth for any company true that's done a too much too much help had been done with this it ai i mean all our vehicles are now uh, enabled with gps and this very uh, normal things gps uh, like 4 5 years back gps enabled vehicle was a big thing now it is a very normal thing and amount of automation which this industry can do and with the same workforce you can do 10 times if not more of a business like when we started everything was manual chalan register bill tea register cash register payment register now everything with a click of a button in many a cases even small booking will see pre- people are preparing the consignment notes on computers so once you have done it on a computer you don't need to keep any other uh, detail everybody get transferred directly from there so it has helped a lot in the industry people now have to be more adaptive to all whatever the new things is coming as a technological you have to be more adaptive to that thing so that you can take use of that so what would be the major it developments in efc so we have enabled different systems even on a whatsapp group you will be surprised what whatsapp uh, offers you forget about that normal chatting or transferring of data there are so many things we have clubbed it with our own system where an automated system uh, i mean information or a report goes to all branches even to all our customers it's all automated if any any payment is due automatically it goes uh, i mean uh, the normal uh, even a mail goes to that it goes on a whatsapp level to the so i mean sometimes even that the uh, person is so irritated ki are efc ka payment to fata fat karo bar bar nahi to message aata rehta hai so you you have to be make use of all the technology which are available on the industry this is my advice to all my brothers we've also learned pramod ji that while e invoicing is still not compulsory for the road transport industry you have been doing the same for quite some time what was the thought process behind this you 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 have to prepare yourself in advance by the time government makes it and it mandatory for you like uh, e invoicing it is not uh, mandatory for gta we we as a gta we are exempted we can have the normal billing e invoicing is not mandatory but uh, in efc we are doing from the day one i have told my boys ki dekho aaj nahi to kal government ki taraf se compulsory hoga to us samay jaake takleef hoga to aaj hi takleef kar lo na so by the time it uh, it is compulsory for uh, gta even to hum log to comfortable rahenge so we are maintaining it so i can only tell ki your compliance level should be on a high standard be it on a tds front be it on a gst be it on a pf esi pt it there there should not be any relaxation aapko uske liye darkar ho to aur if you can afford char aadmi aur rakho take a help of professionals but uske liye koi chhoot nahi hai because every data government every data whatever we give or the government has now it is computerized those days are gone when the manual data processing was used to done to computer mein hai to aaj nahi to kal government te click of a button mein they will say and uh, even they can bring out a data after 10 years and tell you you have violated there aaj aapka data aapko dena padega so please brothers aap compliance mein kahin pe koi bhi kuch mat rakho kyunki aaj nahi to kal forget about ki 3 saal ke baad aapka ye hoga no government aapko 20 saal baad bhi claim kar sakti hai and you you are liable to pay that so this is my again a big advice ki aap jo kahin pe compliance mein koi bhi kuch mat rakho aaj nahi to kal government aapko pakad hi legi uske
Pramod ji, one big change that we have seen in the industry over the last few years is the vast improvement in infrastructure. How much has that helped your company and what do you think is the impact of toll tax on the industry as a whole? Breakdowns have reduced, transit time has increased. I mean, Calcutta, Bombay, we used to say that it's very little, how will the car come in 7 days, how will the car come in 7 days? Now in 4 days, you are... So government is true in a sense in saying that though boss we are charging you toll tax but road bhi to bane hai. But our fighting with the government or request to government ki sir ek taraf to aap humse gaadi mein itna bada tax le rahe ho. Phir aap tax permit ke liye le rahe ho, road tax le rahe ho. Phir aap uske liye kare ho ki bhi diesel pe bhi aapne tax dal diya. Sab aap humse le rahe ho, uske baad aap bole toll tax bhi dijiye. So somehow we feel ki bhi very very extra burden is being levied on a transport sector. So government has to be reasonable in asking. And everything you have to do is advance. We are an industry where you don't give a single day's credit. Today we have diesel, so we have to give our hands and hands. We have to take toll tax, so first you will have to charge the card and then you will have to take toll tax. Tax, permit, insurance, everything is in advance. If you have to book a client, then you don't give any advance to your client. So it is, the transport industry is somehow different from other industries. In other industries, you can see that the supplier has a credit. और फिर आगे आप अपने क्लाइंट को क्रेडिट देते हो यहाँ पे हमको कोई क्रेडिट नहीं मिलता है हंड्रेड परसेंट पेमेंट आइर बाई ट्रक ओनर और ट्रांसपोर्ट इंडस्ट्री हैज टू बी मेड इन एडवांस ओनली आफ्टर दैट यू कैन प्लाई योर व्हीकल तो इस चीज़ को लेके भी थोड़ा ये है कि भाई अब गवर्नमेंट इतने टैक्सेस लगा के टर्न अराउंड टाइम कम हुआ है पहले एक गाड़ी पाँच किलोमीटर हम सोचते थे बहुत है अब आ गाड़ी आठ किलोमीटर नौ भी चल सकती है प्रोवाइडेड द डिटेंसन आर नॉट देयर तो रोड साइड बिकम गुड पहले की बजाय ब्रेकडाउंस भी कम है टायर कंजम्पशन जो है पहले से कम हुआ है इन पहले एक टायर होता था कि 50-60,000 किलोमीटर चलेगा अभी लाख डेढ़ लाख किलोमीटर नॉर्मल की बात हो रही तो दीज आर सम ऑफ द थिंग्स बेटरमेंट तो हुआ है बट बेटरमेंट के साथ जो कॉस्ट आ गया है वो इतना ज़्यादा आ गया कि बेटरमेंट को नलीफाई करके और ज़्यादा आ गया है कॉस्ट वेल फ्रेंड्स वन ऑफ द मेजर इशूज ऑफ द रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट इंडस्ट्री हैज बीन शॉर्टेज ऑफ ड्राइवर्स लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल टॉक अबाउट इट बट नथिंग मच is being done to solve this problem. However, Mr. Pramod Gupta has this dream of turning graduates into truck drivers and he has already started the process. He's working towards it. So what are his plans and what are his thoughts on shortage of drivers? We'll continue our discussion with Mr. Pramod Gupta after this very short break. You are watching Legends of Road Transport sponsored by Ashok Leyland and powered by Gulf Oil Lubricants. आज इस बस में एक एस्ट्रोनॉट जा रहा है उनके पास एक रॉकस्टार भी बैठी है इनके बीच एक लॉयर भी है एक इंजीनियर भी है डिजाइनर भी जा रही है क्योंकि इस बस में सिर्फ बच्चे नहीं इस देश का भविष्य जा रहा है और हमारा काम है उन्हें सुरक्षित उनकी मंजिल तक पहुंचाना अशोक लीलंड कोई मंजिल दूर नहीं अरे छोटे यार रोज सुबह हम दूध लेते हैं कभी सेम भैंस का दूध दो बार खरीदा होगा क्या सोचने वाली बात है ना अपने अशोक लेलन में कौन सा ऑयल इसमें सोचने वाली कोई बात ही नहीं है गल्फ ड्यूरामैक्स खास अशोक लेलन ट्रक्स के लिए बना है पैक पर देखो साफ लिखा है सिर्फ अशोक लेलन के लिए नहीं बल्कि अशोक लेलन द्वारा सुझाया गया खुद अशोक लेलन कह रहा है और इसको डालते हो तो ये चले भी पूरे अस्सी हजार किलोमीटर वेलकम बैक टू लेजेंड ऑफ रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट स्पॉन्सर्ड बाई अशोक लेलैंड एंड पावर्ड बाई गल्फ ऑयल लुब्रिकेंस वी आर इन कन्वर्सेशन विद आर लेजेंड फॉर द मंथ मिस्टर प्रमोद गुप्ता वॉट अबाउट द चैलेंजेस ऑन द हाईवे लैक ऑफ फेसिलिटीज हेरसमेंट How does one deal with that? People ask me कि air condition cabin बना देते हैं मतलब उससे क्या होगा? ढाबे पे जाके तो वैसे ही बैठना है उसको। घर में तो driver के AC है नहीं। Garage में हमारे पास आता है वहाँ क्या AC में बैठता है? 
to simply putting a ac cabin for a driver for driving is not going to help other infrastructure main ye nahi keh raha hu ki cabin mein aap ac mat lagaiye he is not used to that why do we use ac in our cars now pehle to nahi tha aaj se 20 saal pehle to nahi use karte the kyun now we have become used to ki ac chahiye ghar mein ac hai office mein ac hai kisi client ke office mein jate hain wahan ac hai तो अभी ड्राइवर हमारा उतना एकस्टम नहीं है उस एसी लगाने के बजाय उसके लिए और ज़्यादा फैसिलिटीज आ जाए वी आर वर्ड जैसे लास्ट टाइम दर इज कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑफ इंडियन ऑल कॉरपोरेशन वहाँ चेयरमैन साहब भी आए थे उनके कि दे आर दे आर ऑल्सो प्लानिंग तो वी हैव टू कलेक्टिवली मेक देर आर बिग ट्रांसपोर्ट कंपनीज हु आर पुटिंग इन एक्टिविटीज अंडर सी तो उसको कलेक्टिवली भी किया जा सकता है कलेक्टिवली करके वी कैन क्रिएट सम सेंटर्स कि भी एक एक सेंटर करके बनाना शुरू करें तो इफ़ यू स्टार्ट टुडे जीरो से कम से कम एक पे आए एक से दस सौ हज़ार हो जाएंगे बट वो सेंटर बनाने पड़ेंगे तो आई एम स्ट्रांगली ऑफ द ओपिनियन कि इंडस्ट्री शुड कम फॉरवर्ड फॉर मेकिंग बेटर फैसिलिटीज़ फॉर द ड्राइवर सो दैट ये जो ड्राइवर की शॉर्टेज है या जो इलिटरेसी पार्ट है वो कम से कम ये हो उसको दूर करने की चेष्टा तो करनी चाहिए हम लोगों को Prabhu ji, you have been a member of Calcutta Goods Transport Association for quite some time now. What are the activities that the association is taking up? Yes, mm, I am a chairman for CGTA Nagar project. CGTA is one of the oldest association in India, and we can proudly say, at times, all the big name of industry they have been a part of CGTA. So that rich legacy is there. and i'm just a small part of that as we as we had a dream of calcutta goods transport cgt and agar coming up our seniors have uh, bought a big chunk of land which is not even possible to de aaj ke din yadi aap kitne bhi paise to utne badi land le hi nahi sakte aap 150 acre ka single plot bana ke unhone diya hum logon ko so we are making all our effort to make it uh, and it is already it is now a real story people had i mean from this month only people will start building their warehouses offices there and in span of one year you will see lot many construction have come up road work is already been done first level of road work and all uh, this infrastructure towards rain water drainage system is already there so we are coming up with the electricity supply and uh, water supply also so cgt is working hard in that direction and we have got a dream of making the best transport nagar in india at least if not in asia prabhu ji how do you see the future of the road transport industry and also of efc from year on i can only say personally for me i mean i'm working i mean efc as a group is working towards many vertical which are not even part of transport we are into disruptive technology also we are manufacturing drones and we are on a very high scale in there also but for me if you ask me personally transport to blood mein hai yaar to ye to rahega transport ka future bahut bright hai please don't be negative and mai others forum pe bhi logon ko kehta hu ki aap ye jo apni industry ko curse karte ho na isse bura kuch bhi nahi hai no remove that thinking आप ये कहो दिव्य ये इंडस्ट्री जो हमको ब्रेड बटर दे रही है आज के दिन दिस इज़ द बेस्ट इंडस्ट्री इन द वर्ल्ड जब आपको किसी दूसरी इंडस्ट्री से जुड़ो देन कंपेयर योर सेल्फ की उससे ये बेटर है वो बेटर है कि ये बेटर है बट एज लॉन्ग एज दिस इंडस्ट्री इज टेकिंग केयर ऑफ यू एंड योर फैमिली दिस इज़ द बेस्ट इंडस्ट्री तो ट्रांसपोर्ट का तो आगे भी इंडस्ट्रियल डेवलपमेंट होगा तो कितना ही रेलवे आ जाए कितना ही वाटरवेज आ जाए कितना ही एयरवेज आ जाए रोड का एक अपना रोल है और वो रहेगा एंड दैट रोल रोल विल बी वेरी वेरी बिग फाइनली प्रमोद जी एनी एडवाइस फॉर द यंगस्टर्स हु वुड लाइक टू स्टार्ट दिस बिजनेस और हु आर ऑलरेडी इन द इन द बिजनेस व्हाट शुड बी द वे फॉरवर्ड देखो मेरा ये कहना है कि डोंट डायरेक्टली जंप फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल जज द वाटर जजिंग द वाटर मीन्स क्या है हैव वर्किंग एक्सपीरियंस विथ समबडी आप उसको साल छः महीना दो साल आप करके देखो देन यू कम टू नो व्हाट आर द प्लस पॉइंट माइनस पॉइंट ऑफ द इंडस्ट्री एंड उसके बाद यू कैन टेक अ कॉल वेरी फ्रेंकली टुडे द इंडस्ट्री इज रनिंग टुवर्ड्स वेरी वेरी हार्ड टाइम्स और उसके लिए बहुत बड़ा कारण एग्रीगेटर्स हैं बट आई थिंक फाइनली द इन्वेस्टर हैव ऑल्सो कम टू अ टर्म्स वेयर दे नो कि दीज एग्रीगेटर्स आर ओनली बर्निंग देयर मनी 
दे डोंट हैव एनी डिज़ायर टू बी सक्सेसफुल वो उनको एक फालतू का ड्रीम दिखा के भी पंद्रह लाख करोड़ की इंडस्ट्री है हम यदि इसमें एक परसेंट दो परसेंट का भी करेंगे तो और वॉल्यूम्स आर विल बी सो हाई सो हाई बट विदाउट मार्जिन नो बडी कैन सर्वाइव तो सूनर और लेटर पीपल विल रियलाइज एंड दे हैव स्टार्टेड रियलाइजिंग दिस तेल ओनली से माई ब्रदर्स की भाई ऐसा नहीं कि ट्रांसपोर्ट में आप आज आँख खोल के और बोलो कल से मैं स्टार्ट करने वाला हूँ दैट्स नॉट गोइंग टू बी हेल्प आप उसमें पहले जज करो देखो समझो उसको और उसके बाद उस वेलकम मैं तो आई टेल ऑल पीपल कि यदि आपको कहीं पे कोई भी प्रॉब्लम हो दरकार हो हेल्प हो डायरेक्टली इनडायरेक्टली वट एवर लिटिल बिट हेल्प आई कैन एक्सटेंड आई एल ऑलवेज बी अवेलेबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेल फ्रेंड्स दैट वॉज आर इंटरक्शन विद मिस्टर प्रमोद गुप्ता इन द लेजेंड ऑफ रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट सीरीज वेल फ्रेंड्स दैट वॉज आर इंटरक्शन विद द लेजेंड मिस्टर प्रमोद गुप्ता वाइल मिस्टर गुप्ता जर्नी इज इंस्पायरिंग It is also a handbook for many youngsters who wish to be a part of this industry already step into the industry. It is really heartening to see that Mr Gupta is willing to help youngsters and advise them whenever and wherever required. Aaj is truck pe ek kisan ki jama poonji ja rahi hai. एक दुकानदार की तरक्की भी है एक मां की ममता भी है आज इस ट्रक में सिर्फ गेहूं चावल नहीं एक बेटी की ताकत भी सफर कर रही है और उनके संग एक ड्राइवर की मेहनत भी है क्योंकि इस ट्रक में सिर्फ अनाज नहीं इस देश के कई लोगों के अरमान और सपने भी चलते हैं हमारा काम है उन्हें सुरक्षित उनकी मंजिल तक पहुंचाना अशोक लीलंड कोई मंजिल दूर नहीं अरे छोटे एक इंसान अपने जीवन में लगभग 12 लाख किलोमीटर चलता है उस हिसाब से तो हम ट्रक से भी ज्यादा चल रहे सोचने वाली बात है अपने अशोक लेलैंड में कौन सा ऑयल इसमें सोचने वाली कोई बात ही नहीं है गल्फ ड्यूरामैक्स खास अशोक लेलैंड ट्रक्स के लिए बना है बैक पर देखो साफ लिखा है सिर्फ अशोक लेलैंड के लिए नहीं बल्कि अशोक लेलैंड द्वारा सुझाया गया खुद अशोक लेलैंड कह रहा है और इसको डालते हो तो ये चले भी पूरे अस्सी किलोमीटर नेक्स्ट मंथ विद्रांसपोर्ट sponsored by Ashok Leyland and powered by Gulf Oil Lubricants we'll see you next week with another exciting interview until then stay safe mask up once more jai hind